Welcome to the Fall Protection Forum. My name is Kevin Dennis with Gravitech Systems, and today's topic is calculated clearance of energy absorbing lanyards. One of the main objectives of a fall arrest system is to arrest that worker's fall before the worker strikes the ground or strikes any other object during the fall path. Seems straightforward, but it can be a little confusing. What I'm going to show you today is how to field calculate energy absorbing lanyards. A field calculation is an estimate of the required clearance based upon the equipment that the competent person sees. This is a skill that Gravitech believes that every competent person should have. You should be able to look at a worker, look at the equipment and the surrounding area and say whether the system is going to perform as intended or not. The first thing that we need to do is to evaluate the worker and relation to the anchor point. So let's assume we have a six foot, 250 pound worker connected two feet above their head with a six foot energy absorbing lanyard, okay? The first step is to determine your available clearance. The available clearance is basically how high the worker is off the ground, how much clearance do you have in the surrounding structure? Let's assume that that anchor point is 20 feet off of the ground. That reference point could be the platform that the worker's standing on, it could be the dorsal D-ring, could be the anchor point, but it has to be a known measurement. You have to know how much clearance you have available. Second step is to look at the required clearance. If the worker should fall, how is the equipment going to react and behave, and how much distance are you going to need to effectively arrest that fall? So 250 pound worker, six foot energy absorbing lanyard, two feet above the dorsal D-ring. So if the worker falls, he's gonna travel an additional four feet, it's basically the slack in the lanyard before the lanyard becomes taut. And that is essentially the free fall distance. Once that lanyard becomes taut, that shock absorber is gonna to begin to deploy. And a six foot FF energy absorbing lanyard uh, based upon the Z359.13 standard allows the shock absorber to deploy up to 48 inches or four feet. At this point in time, kind of an added benefit to calculating your clearance is you can also predict the system performance. We know that the ANSI .13 energy absorbing lanyards are tested with a 282 pound test weight that represents a 310 pound worker, and they're tested with a six foot free fall. During that test, that shock absorber cannot have a average deployment force to more than 900 pounds. So looking at what we're dealing with here, my worker is 250, which is less than the 310, obviously, and he's falling four feet, which is less than the six feet that it's tested to. So we can safely assume that the average deployment force on this worker is gonna be well under the 1,800 pound maximum. It's gonna be more in the area of 900 pounds. And we can also assume that we're not gonna need all four feet, but it's a field calculation, so we're gonna go worst case scenario. We know it's not gonna deploy more than four feet. If anything, we've got a few inches of, of uh, safety margin in here or a buffer. As that lanyard is becoming taut and deploying, we have to account for the harness stretch. Harness stretch is a generic term that everybody uses for the harness as it uh, collapses and surrounds around the body, as the D-ring slides up, as the person slumps into the harness. All of these little things that having to do with the harness adjustment add up to some distance. And most people will add a foot for that. Now the worker is hanging off the end of that lanyard, six foot worker connected at the dorsal D-ring, roughly 12 inches or a foot below the top of their head. The remaining consideration for the worker is gonna be five feet. And lastly, we'll add a two foot margin of safety. Margin of safety is good because again, it's an estimate. Um, again, the harness might stretch more than it should. We might be have an anchor strap that tensions down and adds a few inches. Worker might be six foot three with his work boot heels on. You can eat up 24 inches in intangibles pretty quickly. But now we have all of our known measurements. Our available clearance is 20 feet from the anchor point. Our required clearance from the anchor point is two for the uh, uh, length of lanyard that was above the dorsal D-ring, four for the free fall. Those are combined to basically be our six foot lanyard. Deployment of the shock absorber for four feet, one for the harness stretch, five for the remaining height of the worker, and two gives me 18 feet. Subtract the two, 
person's going to be about two feet to the positive above the ground. So that's roughly how you feel calculated clearance. If any of this had revealed something wrong, where the person's going to hit the ground, or there's an issue with the impact force, that's where the competent person is the ability to stop and change it and take corrective action. I wanted to show you another way that clearance calculations are often done, and that's using the platform which the worker is standing as the beginning reference point rather than the anchor. So if we leave everything exactly the same, six foot, 250 pound worker, six foot FF energy absorbing lanyard, and it's anchored two feet above the worker's head. In this situation, the platform would be 13 feet above the ground on which the worker is located. So now we can go to the required clearance. Starting from the worker's feet, he's going to free fall four feet. That's the slack that's in the lanyard minus the two feet that the lanyard is located above their D-ring. Energy absorber begins to deploy for four feet or up to 48 inches. Worst case scenario. One foot for the harness stretch as it collapses around the worker's body, D-ring stretch, and et cetera. And since we're following the worker's feet through the fall, I don't need to add their height into this calculation. The last thing I need to add is just merely the margin of safety. So the available clearance in this situation is 13. The required clearance is 4, 8, 9, 10, and 11. I still end up with the two feet of available clearance between the worker's feet and the ground. If you have any questions about fall protection and rescue, contact Gravitech Systems at 800-755-8455 or on our website at www.gravitech.com.